Intel's 11th generation CPU, otherwise known as Rocket Lake, is just around the corner and it is set to release in March and we now have a few leaks of performance in several benchmarks. Will Intel's 11th gen CPU be able to beat AMD's Ryzen 5000 series of CPUs? Will Intel reclaim the title for the world's fastest gaming CPU? Let's get into it. We had a few leaks on the performance of some early engineering samples of Intel's 11th generation CPUs and while the scores presented were better than Intel's 10th gen, they were not better than AMD's latest Ryzen 5000 series. That is, until you realize that the clock speeds of these early engineering samples are much lower than expected when they are released. One leak by Raichu had several benchmarks in CPU-Z and in Cinebench R20 and R23. To understand the potential of Intel's 11th generation top-end CPU, the i9-11900K, I decided to do some benchmarking of my 10th gen i9-10850K. I benchmarked its performance versus frequency to find out how the 10th gen performance scales with frequency, and then we can use that scaling to see the potential for the 11th generation. So I got to work benchmarking single-threaded performance of the new Cinebench R23 from 4.5 GHz to 5.3 GHz to establish the performance scaling. At 4.5 GHz, the 10th gen single-threaded score was 1,214, and when overclocked to 5.3 GHz, the score increased to 1,412. So a 17.8% increase in frequency provided a 16.3% uplift in single-threaded performance. Now, the leak showed that the single-threaded performance of the Intel 11th generation to be 1,444, which, when compared to the 1,412 of the 10th gen, is not that impressive. However, when you consider the score was at 4.5 GHz, and you compare that score to the 10th gen score at 4.5 GHz of 1,214, then you can see a 19% improvement for Rocket Lake. Considering that Rocket Lake is also expected to hit 5.3 GHz, then the potential single-threaded performance could be 1,680. Now that is a significant score since it compares very well to AMD's 5000 series of CPUs. I had to pull from various sources for these scores since Cinebench R23 is a relatively new benchmark and not much data is available and I'm still waiting to get my Ryzen 9. However, the Intel Rocket Lake CPU will be similar to a Ryzen 9 5950X running at 5.05 GHz. If we compare the single threaded performance of the Ryzen 3000 series or Zen 2, you can see that they were slightly behind but very close and competitive with Intel's 10th gen. The Ryzen 5000 or Zen 3 was a large increase and it looks like Intel's 11th gen will now be competitive again. Let's look at the Cinebench R20 single threaded performance. So I again benchmark my 10th gen 10850K versus frequency from 4.5 to 5.3 GHz. You can see that for the 17% increase in clock speed, it provides a 17% increase in single threader performance. The leak of the 11th gen chip shows that the single threader performance of 561. However, that was at 4.5 GHz. When we extrapolate out to 5.3 GHz, we can expect a score of 657. That is a large 21% increase from 542 in my 10th gen part. That seemed very impressive and I wanted to do a sense check. From Intel, we know that Rocket Lake is based on Cypress Cove. We also know that Ice Lake is based on Sunny Cove, but are very much the same. And we know that the architecture of Ice Lake is very similar to Tiger Lake, and that Intel released Tiger Lake as part of the 11th gen mobile CPUs introduced in September. The major difference between Tiger Lake and Ice Lake is the much higher clock speeds. So I decided to look up the scores for Intel's Tiger Lake CPUs to provide a sort of a sense check. I chose the numbers from Hardware and Box as they provide excellent data and for the other CPUs that I have benchmarked, my data seems to correspond very well with their results. They do awesome work, so I would highly recommend you check out their channel if you haven't done so yet. I'll leave a link in the description below. The i7-1165G7 runs up to 4.7 GHz single core speeds, and the top of the line i7-1185G7 runs up to 4.8 GHz. The single threader performance scores are just slightly below the Rocket Lake S projections, but they also have the same performance scaling versus frequency. If we project out the score of the Tiger Lake chip at 5.3 GHz, we get a score of 640. So the projection for Intel's 11th gen desktop CPU seems very plausible. I then wanted to plot the Ryzen 5000 series versus frequency. Until I can actually purchase a Ryzen 9, I again chose the numbers from Hardware Unboxed. 
When plotting those results, you can see that Intel should be able to provide similar single-threaded performance to the Ryzen 5000 series of CPUs when running from 4.8 to 5.1 GHz. Those frequencies are well within Intel's capabilities on this backported architecture on this well-known and very mature 14 nanometer process node. I then wanted to look at the Ryzen 3000 series and you can see that just as the Ryzen 3000 series was comparable to the Intel 10th gen, the Intel 11th gen should be comparable to the Ryzen 5000 series. When AMD took the CPU gaming crown from Intel with the Ryzen 5000 series of CPUs, they needed a massive improvement in single threaded performance to achieve a single digit performance gain over Intel in gaming. At AMD's October 8th event, I showed how in the 10 games that they compared, Ryzen beat Intel on average by 6.8%. Then, on November 5th, when the product was launched, AMD provided a chart showing 40 games and that it beat Intel on average by just 3%. So with Intel catching back up to AMD, it seems that Intel is poised to retake the gaming crown away from AMD when they launch Rocket Lake in March. However, I will say that it will only be a partial victory as the Intel CPUs can only compete with Ryzen 5 and Ryzen 7. They cannot compete with Ryzen 9. We'll cover more on that later. Let's look at the leak on the multi-threaded performance. To benchmark my 10850K, I set the max number of cores to 8 in the BIOS and then performed the benchmarking versus frequency. I benchmarked the expected all-core turbo frequencies for Rocket Lake from 4.1 to 4.8 GHz. You can see that a 17% increase in frequency, again, produced a 17% increase in performance. The leak of the multi-core performance of 5214 at 4.1 GHz shows an impressive 22% improvement in performance over the 10th gen. And if we project that out to 4.8 GHz all-core turbo, you can see the score at just over 6000 at 6078. How does that compare with the Ryzen 7 5800X? Again, going back to the numbers from Hardware and Box, you can see that the i9-11900K slightly beats the Ryzen 7 5800X. So the highest end 11 gen CPU will be comparable to the Ryzen 7 5800X. In April, Intel explained why frequency matters in gaming and declared its 10th gen i9-10900K as the world's fastest gaming processor. Then in October, AMD proclaimed the Ryzen 9 5900X as the world's best gaming CPU. So I suspect that when Intel makes its announcement, either at Virtual CES in January or later, they will again proclaim that they have the world's fastest gaming processor with the i9-11900K. If we compare Intel's 11th gen lineup against the Ryzen 5000 series of CPUs, then you can see a lopsided comparison since Rocket Lake will top out at 8 cores. Intel does not have an 11 gen CPU to compete with 12 or 16 cores. For more than 8 cores, that will be left to Intel's 10th generation Core X or Cascade Lake X CPUs. Many will argue that you don't need more than 6 or 8 cores for gaming, and I would agree. It's only if you are doing other tasks like streaming or using your PC for work that you may need the additional cores. I can say that my Threadripper system that I assembled previously has absolutely spoiled me into having additional cores. To have multiple desktops and many programs running is a luxury that I didn't know I wanted until I experienced it myself. But that system is mostly used for work and only part-time gaming. Looking at the lineup without Ryzen 9, it really makes me wonder why Intel is even creating the i7-11700K. It's essentially a downclocked i9-11900K. Maybe this is going to be the equivalent to the 10850K, which is the same chip as the 10900K, but it comes at a significant price premium. The logical thing to do would be to not have the i9-11900K exist. Intel pushed 8 cores down to the i7 lineup in the 10th generation. So why will it elevate 8 cores again in the 11th generation? One word, pricing. Intel wants to charge you mid to upper $400 range for this processor and they can't do that with an i7. So for those not paying attention, they will be fleeced into paying an exorbitant price premium for a minor increase in performance. While it may technically take the gaming crown again, I suspect the performance difference will not be noticeable for 98% of the people who have gaming systems with Ryzen 5000 CPUs. Only the top 2% of people who actually game competitively will actually take notice and care about that small performance gain over Ryzen 5000. And for those who don't require more than 8 cores, it could be an alternative if Intel decides to offer better pricing. But from what I see in creating the i9 for the 11th generation, I am not too hopeful. Like it if you learned something, share it, that really helps the channel. Subscribe for more. To get my thoughts on Intel's 10th gen or Ryzen 5000 series,
click on these links. Coming up, I'll be comparing CPUs from AMD, Intel, and Apple to really dig into the performance differences beyond just the benchmarks, and how do these systems really compare in day-to-day -day use, and will we see a shift from x86 to ARM? Thank you all so very much for watching. Stay safe out there, and I will see you in the next one.